Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Representative Hudson, um, the Agency for Healthcare Administration has uh, estimated that if uh, the legislature were to implement uh, health care expansion, um, we would get about $435 million annually uh, into the state of surplus. Um, we have a plan, the Health Care Plus plan, that I believe we're spending about $230 uh, million on. If we were to move into the health care expansion using the increased Medicaid dollars, uh, would we be able to reduce the number of people on med waiver lists, the seniors, uh, or the 20,000 people with disabilities? Representative Hudson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Representative, I would say your question is highly speculative because it truly is a function of uh, this body as to how they would like to spend their general revenue dollars. They could choose to allocate those dollars to any area in the budget. Um, anything that's in the Treasury, they would have that opportunity to be able to allocate them to. Or follow up. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you for your answer. So, have we chosen then? Uh, with all the excess dollars we've had in the state this year to continue uh, having wait lists of frail and elder seniors of about 35,000, uh, of about 20,000 people with disabilities. Um, have we chosen to do that this year and not actually get rid of those lists? Representative Hudson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, we have uh, allocated resources to uh, wait lists, uh, for instance, in the area for um, Agency for Persons with Disabilities and for seniors. Um, we have uh, identified and for the first time we're able to get people off wait lists that are not in the most critical uh, levels. Uh, and I would also say that um, you might have heard uh, earlier, uh, Representative Fresen uh, mentioned some uh, allocation money that went towards the education area. Or follow up. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you, Representative Hudson. I know you're doing everything you can with the allotment that we have, but couldn't we further choose to reduce those lists that, and we've had seniors languishing for five years, couldn't we choose to reduce those lists more than maybe 3,000 uh, with the med waiver lists for those elder, frail seniors, or uh, seven to 800 off that 20,000? person list. Representative Hudson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, Representative, the budget is a, a balancing act based on the amount of money we have in the Treasury and all the various uh, appropriation silos to make sure that all the critical needs in the state of Florida uh, are addressed. Or follow up. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Representative Hudson. Um, when the allotment, I'm sorry, the allocation was provided to chairs and ranking members in a sealed envelope, had you been able to request a certain amount to take care of those people on these wait lists? Representative Hudson. Or I can defer to, defer to Chairman McKeel. You're recognized, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And um, with all with respect, Representative Pastor Pafford, these questions are not about the budget that are in front of you. These questions are about the allocation that the Speaker made. Um, so if you have questions about the allocation, I'll be happy to answer them. Representative Pafford. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Chair uh, McKeel. And, and I'm sorry, maybe I'm mistaken, but the allocations are directly impacting the number of people we continue to retain on wait lists, aren't they? Chairman McKeel. Thank you. The allocations are decided by the speaker on how much money we're going to spend in each silo. The allocations are handed to each subcommittee chair and the subcommittee chair and that subcommittee decides within that allocation how to prioritize the, um, the, uh, the, that allocation. Then there is a joint conference committee in that, in that silo after we arrive at joint allocations and those conference committee people decide how to spend the allocation that's given them. And the budget that's in front of you, the conference report that's in front of you, uh, is the uh, culmination of that process. Representative Pafford. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Chair McKeel. So, at what point would the chamber then be able, as a body or through an appropriations committee, determine that we need more of an allocation to take care of all those people on those wait lists? Chairman McKeel. Again, I think this is a, a question about, thank you, Mr. Speaker, I think it's a question about process, not about the budget. You know, relative to process, the speaker determines the allocation for each given silo, and he gives that allocation to the subcommittee chairs. That's how we determine the house product. Then in conference committee, based on the allocations that are, that are given, we determine what the prioritization of that allocation will be. It sounds as though you have concerns within the allocation about what that committee prioritized, the, pr the process answer to your question is when the House product came through, you could have filed an amendment pur pursuant to the rules if you didn't like some allocation for a specific program. Representative Pafford. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Did we lobby then to get more of an allocation for the wait lists? Uh, members, I I'm, I'm going to come down and, and lean with Chairman McKeel that we are off base of the Health and Human Services budget as it is in front of you. How we change that will be an issue that we will deal with next March and April. Do you have a follow-up question on the HHS budget in front of you? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Then I'll change subjects. Um, Representative Hudson, how much are we spending on TB this year? Representative Hudson. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Um, we're spending uh, in the neighborhood of about $9 million. Follow up, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And that's less than last year, which we were spending 10. Representative Hudson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, Representative Patford, as you're aware, um, we were previously operating a aged facility in order to um, uh, provide that care under the advice and and recommendations of the Surgeon General of the great state of Florida. Uh, we have come up with a new integrated model for tuberculosis care in the state of Florida and the amount of money that we are funding on this program is consistent with the recommendations of the Surgeon General. <laughs> 